Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Look at that. <laughs> I normally don't say anything bad about stuff that I get, but <laughs> this is just plain ugly. I'm sorry about that. I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings. I'm really, really happy about this super cool do donation, but damn, <laughs> it is one ugly thing it's called nipan model mm30 so it's a digital multimeter from japan uh, most likely um 1978 uh, 80 something we're probably going to see if we can figure this out look at this power supply and tar charger thingy and um 5.2 volts all right and see they're not the same length and there's some stuff floating around in this one and then you can probably oh you could pull the connector so yeah this has got the well it got all the fundamental features like resistance dc ac and amps and uh how many amps only milli amps and one amp and you can check some i don't know what you can check and then yeah, it feels quite good actually and there's a little led in there and it says minus with a sticker on top outside how about that so we've got three digits and um here on the back, we can see a little bit more about the fantastic specifications and all. Yes, Japan, of course. So let's open it and see what have we got. Oh my god. The first thing... <laughs> Why don't people just remember to remove batteries when they plan not to use something for a very long time or maybe it is just impossible to figure out when you plan not to use something i really haven't yet figured that out and uh, i am not the first to throw a stone here because <laughs> i definitely do it myself to um to be honest but damn, this is totally corroded. And what have you not? A few wires. Okay, we got only two wires coming out of this little battery pack. And it looks a little bit like this could be a charge current limiting resistor or something like that. But I need to access those screws from the bottom. So I guess I just need to yeah, see how we can take out every thing here. It's a little bit of a surprise to see the age of this unit. So if we zoom in a little bit on those op amps, it's a 741 op amps, but look at that. 1974. So is it really that old? But yeah, I think so. It's also a little bit of a surprise to see this type of switch. So it's not a circuit board switch. No, but it's a more common switch they mounted like that so that is a little bit of a surprise and we see um they are the name and number here on the circuit board as well yeah i think we just remove these somebody did a lot of service here this is definitely not the first time somebody took out the ball right and the batteries there are nickel cadmium and they are 450 milliamp hours and one is 500 oh you can see the corrosion is all the way through normally i would say that uh, rechargeables don't do this as bad as uh, for example duracells they are just the worst of the worst product killer but well, that's just how it is i was able to figure out how to pull the circuit board from this uh, case what the heck? What do you think about this uh, soldering job here? 
I think there is an explanation for this. This got to be a kid. So you probably bought this as a DAY soldier yourself kind of thing, right? I mean, there's no way any Japanese company would sell you something to this kind of quality level. I don't know. <laughs> Look what happened here. Something blew up, right? And it was repaired, even. They didn't just throw this out. Oh, no, it's repaired. And, and yeah, look at that. This is the same location inside this, uh, the plastic lid. So, definitely, sign of a, some sort of a meltdown explosion. So, um, I removed the battery pack here. I want to see if we can get a little bit better light. We can see the corrosion also dripped a little bit down here on the circuit board, so I need to clean that a little bit. I bet this is just a little um, gate or something like that. Can't really make much of that. 7417 maybe. This one is the um, 7 BCD to 7 segment uh, decoder. Oh, and here is probably a <coughs> what, meter chip or something like that with BCD outputs. So we should find yeah some signals going back and forward here and then it's doing all the multiplexing and everything inside this chip and see we got the seven segments multiplexed we got uh, the drive transistors for each of the three segments and that is more or less all there is to it of course all the op amps they handle voltage and current uh, resistance and there's a current source and all that kind of stuff and there's maybe even a little AC RMS chip there, I don't know. But this one is from 76, so maybe this one was changed. Because the rest of the chips, they seem to be a little bit older. Oh, 73 even. Yeah, I want to see if I can clean this and then we'll power it up and see what kind of action we get. So, I think we should definitely try and power this up. I cleaned the board really nice and good. We can still see a little bit of uh, funny things. And uh, if I put it into... So this is ohms and then it goes uh, blinkety blankety funky. Oh, let's, let's try and short the the two wires, I made it like that. Oh, look at that! It goes to zero! In ohms! Wow, what a great day! So far, so good. Okay, so let's go to DC volts. And uh, here we got the ranges. So this is one volt full range. And then it goes 500 millivolts, I would guess. Oh, 1.5. This is a 10 volt range. And let's go to the 100 volt range. Okay, so there's definitely a, a funny offset. So back in the 10 volt range, let's try and short the wires and see if that has. Yeah, look at that. 0 0.7. So there's an internal offset, but it's also pulling or pulling up current on the voltmeter input okay so we know that it's if i have zero it reads reads point seven okay now let's take a an external dc source that is completely independent from the supply voltage because you can't just connect these together okay so here is my zero from that power supply so i will now give it five Point zero, and that is weird so we also have a gain issue not just offset but gain so that means somebody's been poking around with this design and obviously we can see that from the solder jobs but let's uh, let's see if we can figure this out with a little poking around with the I think we found some oh we got a lot of trimmers so maybe there is a way to trim this thing. 
And look what I got. I believe this is very close to 5 volts. And uh, if I disconnect my power supply, I still need to short the input, so I haven't really figured out why this is happening. And here is there's about zero. So I think I was able to figure this out. So let's try and do negative five volt and see. Now, oh, why isn't it linear? See if I flip it the other way around. Okay. It's just not really consistent or <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> Maybe it's my switches here. I don't know. But I was able to figure out this one is doing the zero, so I added that. And I think this one has something to do with the gain. And uh, the other three, they don't do anything at all in voltage mode, so I just go and p uh, poke around until I understand what is uh, doing what, and then I add a little text. I don't understand why the previous guys that poked around in this one didn't add this. F quite fundamental to uh, to help the future owner in the, in the quest of figuring out how to calibrate stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I just, I think this is more or less what I wanted to show about this 1974 kind of multimeter from Japan. <laughs> it is definitely a oldie. And this one looks like a kit. I can't believe anybody soldered this much around in it and repaired it a million things. It looks like everything was up and down more than one time anyway. So. I think that is what I wanted to show. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. See you around. Bye bye.